Okay, my camera went off, so we stopped real quick. Let's continue here. We're still on 2120. Still staring at the same mailbox. Here we go. rubbing this, I'm sure. I'm gonna stop here and walk out in front of the truck maybe to get so I can see how high that branch is from you. Sure. Roll your window up, Simon. I'm six foot two. I think it meant six feet and two inches. So we know when someone's hauling a mobile that they're probably gonna they're probably gonna rub some branches. Um, these are fairly small compared to what you'll see farther down the road. Um, I lost track of where the bro tree was on 2115, but we'll probably go back and get a shot of that one. My guess is that that's maybe 12 feet. Yeah, we missed the tree on 2115 where there were broken branches directly above the road. The one that was on the bridge. Yeah. This one's even lower. And, lo and that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can touch this one. Flashers. Those are just the wispy little nothing pieces that yeah, I can. Yeah, those are not very that hard. I can touch the ones, the branches that it's connected to are a good three inches in diameter. That one, there's actually sheared branches off. Can you see it? No, I can't see that. I don't know why you're. It's hard to differentiate. Okay, that's good on the camera. That's directly over the road. Right there. That's sheared off, and those are sheared off. So continuing on 2120 some more. And we are not using any special effects. <laughs> We're not capable of that, Simon. So this is a lot of brushy hanging over the road tunnel kind of effect through here. Yeah. This one, I think, was that the one I was concerned about? Well, all no. these, all these would have been either either rubbing the roof or bouncing off the uh, the edge of the roof. Yeah, which we understand there's going to be some branches that rub. I mean, you're hauling a big, huge thing down the road. But he but the to most... cause the type of damage that he did, and this could have been avoided by simply taking a different route. That he obviously chose his own route since he did not have a permit and a route that was given to him. like he picked the route that would do the most damage it just almost seems like it was completely on purpose yeah this one was my concern oh, yeah. that one that there's some insulation 
Yeah, that was the piece that was hanging up in the in the tree yesterday. <laughs> it was hanging up here off of these branches. I don't know if you can differentiate that with the glare in the camera, but A lot of it's gone already and people have mowed their ditches. Some of these ditches weren't mowed when we were here Friday. The glare on the windshield is terrible. When we get up here to the, to the other spot, then we should both get out to explain the directions of the roof and all that stuff. Yeah. It'll be really illustrative to be able to see the angle of the wire and all this stuff. Yeah, we're close. This is what I was worried about, that a lot of it would be gone because there was a lot of insulation down through here. Excuse me, it's the next mailbox is the pole. Okay, these branches here are like five feet. Yeah, and those are broken off too. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this power line is what he hit. Oh, get really? On the side of the road here. He stopped here before. Yes, Simon. Simon. Sorry, dropped something there. Ugh. Okay, so this is the line that he hit. He was coming from behind me, headed the way that you see my husband walking. Um, at one point when he left us in the pasture, he left and came back down this way to get lumber, and he came back and he straightened the pole. So this pole over here was much more crooked than it is now on Friday. It has fallen back, but not as far as it was. It's not as low as it was on Friday, no. And the pole is not as straight as it was on Friday, and it's also not as crooked because he tampered with the pole. He came back down here and fixed it. Or attempted to. So I'm going to walk you over here to the what I believe must be the... Oh yeah, here's a piece of our siding right here. It uh, matches the dark brown. That's six. Over here, I'll get that pole number for you in a second. Over here is a chunk. Can you slow down? Of our roof. Flip it over so I can see the color. Matches our siding. There's another piece here. There's more pieces on the other side of this driveway. There's another piece here, and here, and all of this matches the siding to our mobile because it's pieces of it. So, back to what I believe, here's another chunk we missed. What I believe is the identifying numbers on this pole here, and I took a picture of this so that we can try and call and report it Monday because the pole that he straightened doesn't have any numbers on it. No, the pole that he straightened doesn't have anything that tells me there's an identifying number. The power line is separated and frayed. I'm going to try and... There you go. You can see there. And that's occurring in several spots on the line. 
Let me try and get with the sun behind me so you can see it better. While well, I watch for traffic. Here we go. It is separated. Stop under the pole. Let me try and get my husband to Paul under the wire. I might be able to get you a size reference. What? Why don't you back up under the wire so you can see how low it is in comparison to the Suburban. And this is at 6226 Van Zandt County Road 2120. there and that's actually not quite as low as it was on Friday because like I said he went over here and he tried to straighten this pole oh we need to pull up in front of that debris so we can get it Doors not closed. it does need to be closed I'm getting out in a second a little farther and get farther off the road babe Hopefully the old geezer next to us doesn't shoot us. I believe that's the... No, that's similar to the boat I saw that came through there. Okay, so on the other side of this guy's driveway... Here's some more pieces of our house. Our house that was being hauled by Big John. And torn up along the way. This is on the side of the road with this nail in it sticking up. And you can see that's the brown. Same thing as our house. And that was, like I said, right across the driveway from the power pole. Roof angles. Huh? Roof angles. Roof angles? Yeah, it's just Let's illustrate what the roof angles were. Okay. So. I'll film you. So there's the power line behind him. So the rear half. Of the second the piece. Of the uh, of the mobile. That was damaged. Through here with the roof like this. The second piece of the mobile is that what you're talking about? Yeah. The okay. Rear piece. The first piece. That the came first through. piece that was not damaged. The first piece that came through was the rear. They they brought the back half first. Yes. And. The way he was pulling it, the rear half roof would have been leaning like this. So it, it would have slid right under that pole. The front half, the roof would have been leaning like this. Which is why it snagged right there, right there at the low spot. Yeah. Which wasn't as low as it is now, but... Yeah, we, we believe the other one maybe just snuck under and he figured since he went under it the first time he was safe and he didn't pay attention to it the second time course he didn't have a permit and he didn't have a lead vehicle so obviously he wasn't doing things correctly you pay someone for a service and you trust that they do their job the way that it is supposed to be done to keep everyone in their property safe and that is not what occurred for us so uh Continuing the rest of the way on 2120 to get over to the property where it was dropped off and still sets unlevel and unanchored, half on blocks and half on wheels right now. So the job wasn't even completed on the day that it was said to be. So after we, now we didn't, we didn't witnessed the the buckling event but when he hit when he arrived up here he explained that when he caught the wire back there the tongue support bracket brace there's insulation over there and the camera's out of focus um buckled and when he arrived up here the whole entire mobile the right, the right side of the tongue was on the ground Yes. And he was dragging it. And it was tipped way over. The corner of the mobile was touching the ground, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The corner of the mobile was touching the ground. OK. 
Okay, so we're approaching the part of the property where where he stopped here. This is this physical address is 6857 Van Zandt County Road 2120. This is Mike's mother's address. And this is where he stopped here and the mobile was completely crooked. And he stopped to brace it and do a few things. It took quite a few minutes. And then we brought him in through here. Can I'll, you stop? I'll point the truck at it. You can see the patch on the fence where the wire has been repaired. We cut the fence down and we took out how many poles? Four, uh, four or five poles we took out. And you can see his tracks here. And then we continued to follow the pasture there along the second fence line to go back. But we didn't make it far before he had to stop again because there was now new damage. The, uh, the brace he used to shore it up to get it just through the fence was made with a uh, with a 12 foot piece of 2 by 12 clear oak that we loaned okay. him. Um, we're fixing to pull into the property over here. I'm going to stop the video in just a second, drive over to the second gate that we're going to go through, and I'm going to stop there and I will start there before we continue through that gate. Yeah, well. So that we have we'll the same Simon. point. This is not where he came through with anything. This is where our, our, our smaller vehicles came through when we had to. So I'm going to stop the video here. When I continue, I will continue exactly on this gate. 